Hey guys, so Fusion 360 recently released the sheet metal functionality to everyone that has the program. And I got a little time to uh, spend with it and made a few parts here. I'm going to show you how to make a sheet metal enclosure. So in the drop down menu here, this sheet metal tab, which wasn't there before, you just go ahead and click on that. We're going to start a sketch. I usually just click this one, it doesn't really matter. And let's just, let's make ourselves a, a box here. So I'm going to make a five five inch by ten inch box okay once you're done with your your bottom face I like to work from the bottom face and work my way up you're gonna hit this flange button now your bar up here might be a little different than mine what I like about Fusion 360 is if I want to add something to the bar I can do that if I want to remove something from the bar I can do that so just pay attention to the actual name of the category versus where buttons are on the screen because it might be different for you so we're gonna hit the flange we're gonna hit this button Right, and it's and we're just going to click OK. All these options are good. It's a new body, and you'll see we have our, our flat piece of steel in this case. But I want to switch this out. And you'll see it has a default library of different materials, and I'm just going to hit aluminum. And for default, I put 062 aluminum. Now each of these has a K factor, and they set these all to 0.44, which isn't the case in real life. But if you're going to be serious about doing sheet metal work, you're going to want to know what tools your shop uses, if it's air bent, if it's bot, you know, bottom bent, or if they're coining, because that number is going to depend on several things. But just in this case, for this example, it's not really important. So I'm just going to hit, click on aluminum, click OK. So now the thickness of my panel will change to whatever that rule is. If I want to change the rule, you're going to go to sheet metal rules, and you can actually edit it. And there's a lot of things you can edit, such as your bend radius. So I like to have my default bend radius uh, almost as tight as possible. And this is, um, in reality, it's, it's going to be more than one thousandths, but this actually works out pretty well. You're, again, you're going to want to ask the shop you plan on using what, what they prefer, because what you, what you want to avoid is different radiuses. You know, if, if you don't need to have different radiuses for several different flanges, it, it makes it a lot easier on the shop, because they don't have to switch out tools to make the, the different radiuses that you've done. So we have this, okay? What I'm going to do and show you, if we click all four, Okay, it's going to miter these, kind of, so let's just do a, a two-inch flange, okay? It's a 90 degree. If you look, you can even drag if you want, but we're just going to do a 90 degree, okay? And this, this height just means, uh, okay, this is two inches from this, the top of this to the bottom of this. Okay, you can change it to the interfaces, right? And that means it'll be two inches from here to that face right there but outer faces is pretty good for the most part. Now, if you want to override the rules you have, you click on, click on that override rules checkbox, and you can change the bend radius. So if you see, let's say if I do a 1 8 inch bend radius, you'll see that. But in this case, I like the, the, the tight bend there. And the bend relief override, that's what you'll see here. So I have, I have a tear right there. That's, that's basically what that is. In this case, it's not going to, show the difference, but I can show you later. So we just click OK. We like that. Now, this is this is how I would bend the box up if I were going to weld it. But if I'm not going to weld it, then I'll show you what I do. So down here, you can see you have your kind of like your history. You know, we've created the first one, we created these last ones. But we're going to go ahead and you double click here. You can also right click on it. So if you, if you want to edit that flange, you can right click it and you can you can edit it. But I, I just like to double click. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that one and remove that one. So this is this is what I want. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend these outside flanges. I'm hit the upper edge. Make sure you don't hit the bottom edge. This is also gonna be two inch flange. But you'll see here this one's actually tucked in, and that's 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 what we want here. Because these are going to get bent up first, and then these flanges are going to get bent into these, and what you end up with is a really nice tight seam, and it's overall a stronger box if it's not getting welded. So let's add some flanges here and here. Let's say let's make these two-inch flanges. That's too much. Let's just let's just say one-inch flanges. Okay. Now we have a little box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch here. I'm just going to put. Uh, points. Four points. These are going to be holes for hardware. 
I'll show you. So we're going to dimension these. And you want to make sure to dimension these on the part that's not going to change. So let's do, let's say, 0.25 from there. Let's say, yeah, 0.5 from there. After these, we can do this. And for the dimension, you can click that. And what that's going to do is it's going to link that to that one. So when we do all of these, it's going to basically be a function. So we can change these numbers and it'll update all of them. So I'll do this. Right click, click OK. And be careful. Sometimes you can hit this edge instead. And click that. And drop this here. Click OK. You can also enter in the, the D13. This is this is your dimension 13 here. Right click, click OK. Dimension this to here. Click OK. So what I've done this. Uh, Sometimes you can find that when you when you place a point, you will end up adding constraint without meaning to. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that. So this is going to be our 0.5. Okay. This here, to this edge here, it's going to be here. Okay. Now you can see if I want to change this. We back out of this. I want to change that to let's say 375. All four corners updated to 375. But I'm going to change that back to 0.5. Okay. I'm going to click a stop sketch up here. So this is these are just points. I'm going to create a hole. So I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, and this one. So uh, the depth you really just want to be the thickness of the material that we're uh, we're going to do. And the diameter, I'm going to put 0 0.1875, and I'll show you why I chose that here in a second. So now we have these holes. These are going to be for hardware. I'm going to put in pen nuts into these, this, this metal here. And pen nuts are they're the nuts that get pressed in with a hydraulic press into the sheet metal. And you can end up with a aluminum chassis like this with stainless steel threads that aren't going to you know, wear down as easily. So an in insert, you can actually go to insert McMaster car component, which is really cool. Click on that. You can pretty much insert anything from the McMaster car catalog into your drawing. So click PEM and you'll see PEM style nuts. That's what I want. So I want a stainless steel press fit nut for sheet metal. Okay, I want a 632. You can click it from here or you can narrow it down like this. So these basically are different. Um, you know, each of these are a thicker nut with more threading here, and this is for minimal panel thickness. I'm just going to use this one here. You're going to click on it. You're going to click the product detail, the CAD, and this is going to give you the information you need. It's going to give you the pen part number, CLS 632-1. It's going to give you the hole size it wants in the material, which is the 1875 that I gave it. Minimum panel thickness, so 40, we're at 60, we're fine. So we're going to go down here, scroll down to step. 3D step, click save, and now what we have is our PEM nut here. And I'm just going to go ahead and orient this the way, kind of the way I want it right now, just so it makes things a little easier. So this is a PEM nut, and you can see it's, it's got these these narrowed edges. And these, when you press these in from the uh, bottom side of this panel here, it's going to eat basically clinch into the the metal, and it, it's not going to come out. So to fasten this to this, we're going to go to Assemble, Joint, or you can just click J. Okay, Capture Position. We want this to be a cylindrical attachment. So I'm just going to hit the uh, this circle here on Component 2. I'm going to hit the this circular feature. You see it's already working its magic there. And we're going to click OK. Now this part is constrained. The axis of this nut is constrained in the axis, the center axis of this hole. So what we're going to do now, I want this face to be flush with the bottom of that. Um, now, if you're not really, uh, you don't really care. You don't really have to go into the details here. But so I'm just going to leave it like that for now.
So let's, you can add the, the four others, but I'm not going to. So I'll have back to that. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually make the top cover plate for this. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch here. Okay. We're going to capture position, speed that, not where it is. And under the sketch, you're going to click on project. And then what we want to do is we want to project this face. Click OK. And the reason why is I want to capture these holes. This is where I want the holes in my top cover to be. So I'm going to do a rectangle and I'll snap to the corners of this enclosure here. So now I have a sketch that basically has this, this outline that I want. I'm going to hit flange again. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to make sure to hit this and this. So we basically we'll end up with a plate with holes in the right spot where we want it. And we want to do a new component. We want it to be separate from the other body. So click OK. And now you can see we have a cover for our sheet metal chassis. So let's, let's just kind of assemble this. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to go to a planer and we're going to click this face. And I want it to be, I want it to share the plane with this. Okay. So just click, it starts doing its, its thing there. But I don't want it to be touching from that direction. So you click flip. So now it's going to maintain the planar relationship with those faces. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, but with this face to this back face here. Now if you click both of them, you click in space, it's going to say, hey, you already have a joint unit. I'm sure you want to make another one. Yeah, we do. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to do its thing. Just click OK, and you'll see that it's, it's wrong, just like the other one was. So we can double click to edit that specific joint. We can flip it like we did with the other one. And now we have a cover that is perfectly aligned with the enclosure. If you want to hide all of these joints, you can go to displays and you can go to joints. You can hide them. But now let's say here, capture position. Let's make a slot here. Okay. Now we're going to make a hole. Click enter. And do the same thing over here. Let's do a, a slot. And then we're going to do a, a hole. We're going to stop the sketch. We're going to we're going to click the extrude. You can hit E if you want. And we're going to basically give us a little T slot. So we're going to go to cut distance. You want to be negative your sheet metal thickness. Just click OK. And so now, this way, when someone is removing the stop cover, they only have to take out two screws. They just have to loosen these back two screws. It slides off. And you can take the cover off. So, Moving all four screws. So now that we have our, our top and our bottom, we're going to go into uh, right here. It'll be in the drop down menu too. So create flat pattern, and it's going to want to see the stationary face. This is already a flat pattern, but let's say we want the flat pattern for this box. We're going to click that face there, click OK, and you'll see that it's this is the flat pattern for our box. It has the reliefs and the bend lines and everything. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Now, if you wanted to make holes in the bottom of the chassis for, like, let's say, a circuit board, you could do the same thing I did with this pin nut here. You can go into insert. So for cheap metal, pin style, anything is great. So let's, let's go to pin style standoffs. Okay. And these are basically the same thing as the nuts, but they get pressed in, and, the, you know, you can get let's say a 440 for a, a circuit board to sit on. So you can do it the same way, you click on the part, you're gonna click on product detail, and then you're gonna scroll down and make sure you hit step and click save. And it's automatically going to insert that part for you, which is just really awesome because it, you, know, you don't have to end up going to your browser and downloading it and inserting it. Having it all built in is really nice.
what I've noticed is that McMaster Car has really stepped up the game with their uh, 3D models. They didn't always have threads actually modeled in. They were just kind of, uh, you know, it's like a like a detail almost. You could just see the lines, but it wasn't physically drawn in. But yeah, so this this would be the same thing. You you would make your uh, your holes in the bottom here, and you want to make sure that you know what size hole you're going to do. So if when you go to the McMaster catalog, you'll see that before you download it. Make sure to look at the specs for that part. It's going to have a hole size that it's expecting for that sheet metal to, to actually make that flinch properly. Oh, one more thing. If you want to just see kind of like some of the stuff that you could make, these are a couple things I was playing with last night. This is a lead holder for like test leads for an oscilloscope. Um, same kind of thing. Pretty simple. I just started out with uh, this sketch was a little different than the one that I did for the box there. So if you scroll back, you can actually see what I did. Grab this. You can see this sketch I actually did the entire outline here. And then from there, you can click flange for, and it'll automatically pick that up and it'll ask you for a uh, how long you want it. So there's several different ways of doing the same exact thing. And you, that's a test lead holder. This is um, like a holder for hemostats. You know, you could do a lot of different things here. And what's really cool about this is, let's say you want to design packaging for your product, you can use this sheet metal functionality to design cardboard because it's not really any different than you know bending up sheet metal, except that you can have tighter you know bends where you wouldn't otherwise be able to do with metal. So. But the same thing, like for this part here, you know, if you go into the sheet metal portion of it, and I'm gonna hide the side panel there and click flat pattern. And what's, I'll just make this the stationary face. Click OK. Yeah. And you can see here's the flat pattern. But that could easily be a piece of cardboard or, or something else. And thing with this, this is a hem, and I don't see a hem feature here, so I kind of had to cheat. I had to do a, a flange and then another flange coming back. But this, 90 degree flange was like, you know, one thousandth of an inch, and then I, I did another one at 90, coming back the other way to do the hem. Other sheet metal packages like SolidWorks and Autodesk Inventor have the hem feature built in, so I'm sure they'll add that to this. They just haven't got there yet. But, alright, well, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you later.